Today we are going to go over how to set up the Zoll Thermoguard, which is the intravascular temperature management device. Um, to set this up, what you will need is the startup kit, which looks like this, um, a catheter insertion kit, which you guys use the IC catheter, and then a 500 ml bag of saline. Um, so we'll go ahead and turn the machine on, and it does need to be plugged in, it doesn't keep a battery on it, so we'll turn that on. Um, it'll run through some self-tests, and once we get through that, it'll ask about It'll ask a few questions uh, before we actually set the startup kit in the machine. So the first question that pops up is asking about the bath preset. There are a few options in here. There's pre-cool, pre-warm, or none. And what this is asking about is the actual coolant well that holds the solution that is going to cool or warm the saline uh, that's going to the balloon the <laughs> catheter to the patient. And what's in here is a mixture of distilled water and propylene glycol. You want to make sure it's above the minimum line and underneath the maximum line. So this is actually something that Biomed will keep up with. It does not need to be changed out between patients. Um, if you open it for some reason and it's low, you can top it off with distilled water or sterile water. You don't want to put saline in it because it will corrode that. Um, propylene glycol is really good in here because it's bacteria static and fungi static, so nothing mm -hmm. nasty is going to be growing in this. So water-based systems can grow some pretty nasty bacteria that can get nurses and patients sick so just remember no saline in this ever um, so that is basically asking do we want to pre-cool this fluid in here warm it or do nothing with it if we're cooling our patient for the cardiac arrest application that you guys use we'll go ahead and hit pre-cool so we want to get our patient to target as quickly as possible um, and the next thing that pops up is asking about the target temp and the uh, mode I'm gonna hit no so we can get it back to another screen so target temp, what you'll actually use if you want to change that is this dial to kind of scroll to what you want. And you guys cool to 33? Yes. Okay. So scroll to 33, and push in, and then it's going to ask about the treatment mode. The two main treatment modes that you guys will use is max power, and you'll use that when you're cooling a patient for cardiac arrest or fever. It's going to get them to target as quickly as possible. Control rate is what you guys will use when you are rewarming a patient. So you'll slowly rewarm them. So we'll do max power. And now we are to the screen where we can kind of set up with this. So we'll open this startup kit. On the outside, you'll see a 20 ml slip tip syringe here. And this is for um, when we're removing the catheter. So literally just stick it here where you see all the other ones. Super helpful for that. We're recording. So next, when we open this, we've got six feet of tubing, um, which we also have this in nine feet as well for COVID patients if you want the machine outside of the room or further away from the patient. You've got your heat exchange coil and then an air trap. And I kind of cheated a little bit and went ahead and put my saline in here. But I want to show you guys. Look at this spike. So this spike is a lot bigger than your average IV tubing spike. Um, and it bifurcates a lot lower. So just be careful when you're actually spiking with phagocene because it will perforate the side. Just lower it. Thank you. Just be careful. And then you also want to make sure that when you're spiking this, you're putting it all the way to the hub. Sound effects are great as well. So just make sure that literally goes all the way to the hub so you don't get any air in here. So once this is spiked, you can set it here on this little hook and kind of forget about it. The next step will be to open this cold well, and like I said, check to make sure the solution is above the minimum line, which it is. So we'll drop our coil in here, uh, and then go ahead and stick the cap back on it. And it's important to put the cap back on it. You're not going to lose the solution from evaporation or anything. The only way you'll lose it is literally from taking the coil in and out with it dripping, or if you don't put the cap on it and somebody bumps into it and sloshes it everywhere. And it is super slippery, so mm. just try to put that on as soon as I'm done to remember that. Next up is the air trap. This is literally gonna trap air and make sure no air goes through the catheter that's in the patient. This is gonna sit in this air trap chamber here. Um, for the time being, I'm gonna set it over to nine o'clock because it just makes my next step of loading the tubing into this roller pump a lot easier. This out of the way. So this little roller pump, this clear lid will open up 
and then you actually have this roller pump in here which can be moved and you can move it by your hands or lift this little arm up and rotate it you guys all see that i don't know if i'm like seeing it in the way at all <laughs> see it okay um, can you tell this tubing here is a lot thicker than the rest of the tubing so this is the tubing that's going to go in here you've got this little flange or this side with the disc right here and then there's a little spot for it here so i want to make sure you guys can see it now to put it in correctly because it's really important that it sits in that like a little slot there okay. that this is gonna fit right in so when you're going to load this it makes it a little bit easier if you move this roller pump where these white pins are at 12 and 6 and stick this side with the flange in there until you feel it click it's really important to make sure that it clicks into place there mm -hmm. next you can either lift up this arm and rotate counterclockwise like that and you can see the white pin is actually pushing the tubing down in there. So you don't need to push it down with your fingers. This will do it for you. If the arm is hard to use, you can literally manually rotate it like that as well. And then this side, you're just going to pop into here. And this flat part is not doesn't need to sit in there like this one does. As you can see also on this little drawing, it'll show you that that little flange side sits in there. And this will sit out a little bit. You just need to push that down in there. So now... To this screen we can see we've got a few things that are gray and a few things that are red air trap is one of those that are red because we still need to prime this roller pump lid is red as well and we'll close that should take care of that and then to prime this what we'll do is we will invert the air trap and we've got our little prime switch here so we'll hold this down it'll be about a five to ten second delay before this lights up and starts rotating but then it'll actually start um, priming this with the saline It'll take about two minutes to prime completely. Um, you do have to hold it down the whole time you prime. Probably be the easiest two minutes of your day. Pull up a chair, pull up TikTok right here, take a little break, <laughs> you're good to go. <laughs> I kinda wanna show you guys. Do you mind hanging on to that for me? You can see that this is totally closed loop, so any of the air that's in the tubing or the air trap is actually going into the saline. Mm -hmm. So this is completely closed loop and none of this saline actually goes to the patient. Thank you. So this needs to be completely full with saline. We don't want any air in it. Otherwise it's going to alarm and not allow us to run this machine. So once this is completely full like it is, we can just kind of set it down for now and let it finish priming the rest of the tubing. And a really good visual cue of when the um, tubing is done priming is gonna be this pinwheel. It should start spinning. And sometimes I'll kind of just pop the pinwheel up and down for just gently like flick it to let any air out of it. Just get a little air bubble in there. Here we go. So then again, just lay eyes on your tubing and make sure everything looks good, which it does. If you have little bubbles, it's okay, just like with your IV tubing, but you don't want any like inch long or bigger bubbles like that. So we are good to go with this. Um, and then you can see the prime switch was red when, when I was holding it down. And now it's not once I've let it go. And then air trap will go away in just a second once I put this air trap in its chamber. So this will go upright with the tubing up top. So now we are to the main screen and from here we can close the lid if we want to and kind of untangle this a little bit. Which it is long so it'll get tangled. No matter how you look at it.
So when you go to close this, you've got these little divots for tubing just to make sure nothing gets clamped in there. You're more than welcome to run the machine with the lid open, but if you want to close it, you can close it. It's not going to like click shut, it's just like a gentle, easy close. So from here, we're on the main screen of the machine. You can see up here is where the patient's temperature would go. It's telling us it's on standby. We do have a yellow alert saying that primary probe T1 is disconnected. Um, so we need to hook our patient's temp probe into there. And then over here, this side is gonna be a meter of the solution in the cold well, which is kind of telling us the temperature of it. So you can see this arrow is all the way down. So this saline is already pretty, pretty cold. So it's gonna get our patient to target really quickly. Um, what you guys will use to hook uh, your patient's temperature is going to be these uh, blue temp cord here that's going to look like this. This side is going to go to the machine. You've got T1 and T2 here, so just make sure you hook your primary source that you want the machine to run off of into T1. So if you guys like have esophageal and rectal and you want the machine to go by esophageal, just put that one in T1. For the time being, since we don't have a real patient, I have a little heart tag to simulate that. So we'll stick this in the T1. So now you can see that our patient's temp is 35.1. Right here we've got little alarms saying that the low alarm is set to 28 and the high alarm is set to 42. You guys can change that to whatever alarms you want it. Um, you How do we do that? Yeah. How would you do that? Yes. Um, so you would press this button. You would go to settings, push that in, high, low alarms, and then you can change that. So like low, press enter. You okay. can see those right there. Okay. Yes. Yep. Press enter and then it'll be 